Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, in this session, we will be talking more about the generalized function or I would say generalized consumption function. The idea is that the, the two period model of consumption that we have understood, the two period model restricts some kind of, uh, it helps you understand the behavior of agent in the intertemporal framework. But in some cases, for example, if you are going to work out with the the life cycle theory, Modigliani life cycle theory or the Friedman's permanent income hypothesis that you try to assume that the individual is living for some periods. For example, he works for 30 years, 25 years or maybe the 35 years scenarios. Then if I have to go for the calculation of consumption, so life, uh, his lifetime consumption that how much he is having the consumption then that matters a lot and then it gives you the overall framework. So, if you read these days the, the journal papers appearing in the, the macroeconomics journals, they talk a lot about the, the uh, lifetime consumption of the individual or the representative agent. So, the micro analysis helps you understand the two period in a more context way. So, we have moved from one period to two period. Now, we will be seeing the infinite period scenario how when we extend the individual's consumption for infinite period, suppose period T, then how the budget constraint of the, the, uh, the consumer looks like, how the utility function of the or lifetime utility function of the consumer looks like. So, here we will be uh, trying to understand and we will try to drive with simple exposition. So, the reference remains same. So, both here we have the, the uh, for this particular lecture we are going to rely more on the Eric Sims, especially on his the consumption chapter because that particular chapter is really good to understand the concepts. So, let us have the, let us start with the basic exposition of the model. So, I hope the uncertainty that we just discussed, it helped you understand the idea of precautionary savings that how precautionary savings have a, a role in the economy. So, let us start. So, multi-period setting helps understand about how consumption and income can be calculated over the life cycle. So, when I say in, in your macro textbooks, you will be reading about life cycle theory of consumption. So, how do you decide, how do you calculate that the life cycle consumption theory? So, we now assume that the household lives for many periods. So, here you have T, T plus 1, T plus 2 and T plus T. The lifetime utility uh, can be written as U, U, C, T plus beta U, C, T plus 1 plus beta square U, C, T plus 2 plus beta T. Here you have U, C, T plus T. So, here this pronominal order that we have, it goes up to beta t u c t t. Now, we can generalize this and try to write the expression in this way. So, we can equivalently uh, write lifetime utility using the summation operator. So, here it will be u t summation j is equal to 0 beta j. So, j is this the polynomial order that we are going to do and decide u c t plus j. So, this is the the lifetime or life cycle consumption of the representative agent is going to look like. So, this is uh, important to note that how this particular representative consumer is going to decide about. Now, so from the utility side, it is more like a clear case that the behavioral coefficient is going to have the the polynomial order. So, it is, is order is increasing with the increase in the period the subsequent or with the addition of the subsequent period. So, this is how it looks like. Now, let us work out with the budget constraint. So, when I say about the budget constraint, so let us work out with the first period. So, what we had assumed when we, we were discussing about the 
टू पीरियड सेनारियो सो दिस वन वॉज सी टी प्लस एस टी इज कल टू वाई टी राइट देन हियर वी हैव सी टी प्लस वन प्लस एस टी प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू वाई टी प्लस वन प्लस वन प्लस आर टी एस टी सो दिस इज हाउ इट लुक्स लाइक सो दिस इज द करेंट पीरियड विच मीन्स दैट इफ इंडिविजुअल इज गोइंग टू हैव द इनकम वाई टी ही इज गोइंग टू कंज्यूम सम अमाउंट एंड सम अमाउंट ही इज सेविंग राइट सो इन द फ्यूचर पीरियड वॉट इट बिकम्स सो हियर इट बिकम्स दैट इफ इज गोइंग टू गेट वाई टी प्लस वन इनकम देन दिस इज अगेन इज गोइंग टू बी बाई फॉर क्रेटेड इन टू टू विच इज सी टी प्लस वन प्लस एस टी प्लस वन एंड वॉट एवर सेविंग दैट ही हेज मेड हियर एस टी दिस इज गोइंग टू बी इंटरेस्ट रिवॉर्डिंग सो ही विल बी गेटिंग सम एक्स्ट्रा इनकम ऑन दिस सेविंग अटैच विच इज इक्वल एंड टू वन प्लस आर टी इफ आई गो ऑन एडिंग सच टाइप ऑफ फिनोमिना बाई और इफ आई गो ऑन अपडेटिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर इक्वेशन विद द पीरियड सब्सिक्वेंट पीरियड्स सब्सिक्वेंट फ्यूचर पीरियड्स राइट सो इफ आई गो ऑन अपडेटिंग दिस देन दिस इज हाउ इट लुक्स लाइक दैट इन द इन द फ्यूचर पीरियड वी हैड दिस टू देन सब्सिक्वेंट पीरियड्स सो हियर दिस पर्टिकुलर इंडिविजुअल विल बी सेविंग अगेन बिकॉज इन टू पीरियड मॉडल वी अलाउड द इंडिविजुअल टू सेव ऑनली इन द करेंट पीरियड not in the future period why because future period was the terminal period because then you you don't have any option the only thing that you have to exhaust everything you can't save and dispose so this is how but now when we are saying in a generalized framework then this individual can save in period 2 also period 3 also period 4 also till the terminal period t and before in terminal period t he will not be allowed to save t minus t that we have so t minus 1 that t plus t Uh, t plus t minus one. This we have. So before the terminal period, one period he is allowed to save. So his saving goes till t plus t minus one. So minus one is the previous period. The previous, the one year before the terminal period. So if he is going to die in seventy, so he can save till sixty nine. Seventieth uh, year or seventieth year, he is not going to save anything. So let's understand that also. So here we have C T plus two plus S T plus two is equal to Y T plus two plus one plus R T plus one. Here we have S T plus one. Here we have the C. So here, so S T plus two. So now he will have one plus R T attached with S T plus one. And similarly, in the final period when he is going to be in the terminal period, what he will have? He will have C T plus T is equal to Y T plus capital T plus one plus R small T plus capital T minus one. So this will be the interest income that he is going to get before the terminal period, just immediate before, so immediate past you can say before the terminal period, and then he will have the saving. Now. suppose we assume that interest rate is constant across time so we are not going to change so till the period t the interest rate is same not much change so this is how it looks like right so your st t plus 1 minus s small t plus t the terminal period capital p t minus 1 this is how it looks like that here we'll we'll go for ct t ct plus t upon 1 plus r and this can go on so saving can be written in this way right so this is how it looks like if you walk this out backward then here it it looks like that c t plus t minus 1 plus s t t minus 1 is equal to y t plus t minus 1 plus 1 plus r s t plus t minus 2 so one period before we can introduce it here so here i am having t minus 1 so here i am going for one more period so in the same way If I go for solving this, so here we have S T plus two, S T plus T uh, minus two is equal to C T plus T minus one. Uh, so this one plus R it will be divided to all. So what is the meaning? The meaning is that just one period before of the terminal period. So this will be the present value. In the in terminal period, this will be the square term because we already have one plus r here, right? So the the this is how it looks like. So the two period back, if you look for the savings that we have, so s t plus t minus two, so one period uh, before this the terminal period. So this is how it operates, which means that 
your consumption and income both will have the similar characteristics the only thing is that the terminal period ct plus t will have the polynomial if you are going to work out with the this saving scenario t s t plus t minus 2 now if you go back further then th this is how it looks like that uh, c t plus t minus 1 plus s t plus t minus 1 and y t plus t minus 1 plus 1 plus r s t plus t minus 2. So, s t plus t minus 2 is equal to c t plus uh, t minus 1 upon 1 plus r and th this, this expression we have already got. If we just try to work it out further with this particular scenario right backward and if, if we can repeat this and go to period t in the in the in this period go back again so if we go back to period t so this is how it looks like that ct it forms some kind of uh, a pattern and this pattern helps you calculate the lifetime consumption lifetime budget constraint of the representative consumer so here we have ct plus c t plus 1 upon 1 plus r here we have c t plus 2 upon 1 plus r whole square and it goes up to c t plus t upon 1 plus r is equal to y t plus y t plus 1 upon 1 plus r plus y t minus 2 upon 1 plus r whole square and it goes on. The idea is that if you uh, get back here the idea is that first we are saying that to what extent the individual can save what will be his saving and given the income the interest income attached what will be his saving if i am looking at the saving that how much he saves given the terminal period scenarios so this is how is the savings of individual look like in the period one and if you go back further then this it how look it looks like if you go back till period t then we will have a such type of of pattern appearing so, once we have such type of pattern appearing then you can see that this is the lifetime consumption of the representative agent and this is the lifetime income of the representative agent. We have not introduced any tax here. It is just the income and the consumption. So, the subscript T plus T it, it is representing the time period it is not representing any kind of tax. So, so subscript is the subscript originally. So, here if you try and see that how does it look like so here it is max c c t plus 1 it goes up to c t plus t here you have the utility function here you have a t summation j is equal to 0 here you have the beta j u c t plus j subject to you can write this particular expression in short form in this way right by using the summation so, T summation j is equal to 0, C t plus j upon 1 plus r j is equal to T summation j is equal to 0, y t plus j upon 1 plus r j. The other condition can be written as the marginal utility of the, the future consumption, right. Uh, so, here if I am mentioning about j, so marginal utility of the, the consumption period T plus j it is equivalent to the beta into 1 plus r the marginal utility of future uh, consumption it goes up to t plus j plus 1. So, you can say that the current period consumption of individual is nothing but beta multiplied by the savings that he is making in the current period. So, this is what is the same. So, at this level this is the Euler condition. So, this is the generalized Euler condition of the representative agent. So, as compared to what we saw here in the two period scenario, in the two period scenario we had a Euler condition of, we had the Euler condition going to this particular scenario, here we had, so here we have the, the Euler condition scenario you can see this, right. So, here we have, now if I am going to see in the in with uncertainty the other condition changed and other condition became expectation of c t plus 1 right. So, this is how we had added. So, this was the other condition of the 
representative consumer when he is facing uncertainty in the future period. When we are going to generalize it that how it looks like. So, your generalized the Euler condition looks like this. So, you can go for maximization with respect to Ct, Ct plus 1 and Ct up to T with this Biot constraint you will be getting mu transpose C t plus j is equal to beta into 1 plus r uh, mu transpose C t plus j plus 1 which is the marginal utility of future consumption and here you have the marginal utility of current consumption. The marginal utility of current and future consumption is, are, are same, uh, same provided that the individual saves in the current period and this is equivalent in the future period it becomes 1 plus r beta is your behavioral coefficient. So, this is how we try to look at, but as we have mentioned in the previous analysis that this particular exercise is not, this is the dynamic optimization condition, the Euler condition, it just says that the whatever individual consume in the current period, it is equivalent, he is indifferent if he saves that and consumes in the future. So, both are same. The, but this cannot be the consumption function. So, in order to derive the consumption function in the lifetime, you can go and substitute the budget constraint into this. Uh, the, the, so, you can, uh, you can formulate the log function of the consumption, whatever expression you get, you substitute back into the budget constraint. What you get is this, that if you substitute the generalized other condition back into intertemporal budget constraint, which means that you can solve this and put it here. So, here it should be log. So, here it will be 1 upon c plus t plus j. Here it is 1 upon c plus uh, t plus j plus 1, right? And product of 1 beta into 1 plus r. If you substitute back here, you get the consumption function in the same way that we got. And with that, you can calculate the lifetime marginal procedure consume of the individual, the, the lifetime marginal procedure consume of the consumer with respect to future income, with respect to current income, with respect to interest, the same kind of uh, kind of strategies we had adopted. So, maybe I think it is here, I am talking, if I am talking, then I am talking about this, that we can derive the, so your C t is equal to, C t is the C function of y t, y t plus 1. So, I am talking about this derivation. So, you can go for deriving the similar kind of derivation here. So, here this is how it looks like. So, so here it, it makes sense. So, here if you just try to substitute, so this is the consumption, this is the income of the, so this is the budget constraint if you try to work out. So, here we have the 1 plus r upon uh, r j after solving the c bar is the, the the outcome that you get it from the substitution and this becomes your y t plus j upon 1 plus r j. If you just work out with this, then it becomes 1 upon 1 plus alpha. So, as long as the t is sufficiently large, so if you work for one number of years, then you are going to get the alpha t, the plus 1 is equal to 0, right. So, overall what appears that in the life cycle, so it becomes, uh, if you try to work out, then it becomes the the r upon 1 plus r plays very important role as compared to 1 upon 1 plus beta that we got in two period case. Here the rate of interest will matter. So, so r upon 1 plus r will matter and if you substitute it further uh, with respect to if you go for partial differentiation with respect to future income the expression will change. So, the underlying idea is that with this life cycle imposition or life cycle derivation of the, the utility and the Bayard constraint of the representative consumer, we can easily see that how much this representative consumer is going to have the, the consumption, the change in consumption with respect to current income uh, or I would say lifetime income. So, here there will not be any kind of future as such, but yes, if you want you can add t plus j plus 1 and you can calculate, but your lifetime consumption depends upon the rate of interest, how much you have the rate of interest uh, and the earnings uh, will decide about that how much you are going to save and if you are thinking about the giving preference to the future, so beta is continuously going to be higher, then you are going to give more importance to the 
future period. So, that works. So, generalized uh, equation of the optimization, this is how it looks like. So, I hope it, it is clear to all of you that the consumption function that we normally see in macro textbook, whether it is Keynesian, whether it is the life cycle of Modigliani, whether it is the, the uh, here you have the, the uh, permanent income hypothesis by Milton Friedman. All these theories uh, can be explained with the help of simple mathematical exposition of the macroeconomic concepts and this macroeconomic background will help you understand these theories in a much better way. And you can also extend this further with some more additions and you can see that how those uh, additions will help you understand not only the consumption but also the savings. For example, we introduced the uncertainty and we saw that how this uncertainty when we, when we introduce into the model, it helped us understand the precautionary savings. So, to summarize, now we will be moving to the government and we will be seeing that how in the two period model setup, the, the government is going to react with the uh, set of individuals talking about uh, the, uh, when the individuals pay the tax to the government, how government reacts to that, how government tries to finance the expenditure. So, those concepts will be important. And in this consumption, if you go by the one by one, so we started with two period, then we started uh, some kind of, we derived the consumption function. And then we looked at the comparative statics, introducing the income interest rate scenarios. Then we introduced the uncertainty and uncertainty added further dimension of precautionary savings. And then we generalized the consumption and buyer constraint of the representative consumers in a more robust way. And then we, we can see that with this generalization, you can superimpose the condition of life cycle theory and see how our the permanent income hypothesis that how individuals will behave when they are introduced to this, whether it will be variable coefficient playing very important role or, or it will be the reward of the representative consumer. It also allowed us to uh, impose the condition that, that if we are allowing the individuals to save in the subsequent periods, then how the budget constraint of the representative consumer is going to be changed. So, I hope such background will help you understand the recent developments in macroeconomics in a much better way. These are the new classical ideas. So, new classical ideas have a such type of understanding that they added a dimension of the macro foundations. And we will be having uh, different schools of economic thought and under that we will be, we'll be coming back to this again that how and from where this started and how it is exploring how it has been explored in the recent literature. I would request all of you to have a look at the, the some of the papers appearing in macroeconomics literature, mostly from Journal of Macroeconomics, Journal of Economic Dynamics and Control. So, these, these journals have a sufficient background about such formulations and then you can easily understand, at least you will have idea about that how this particular a particular uh, uh, mathematical formulation helps and in, in which all areas such foundations, micro foundations are applied to understand. So, people try to un understand the behavior of the consumer, behavior of the representative agents, behavior of the, the individuals in a group when we superimpose the condition of rich and poor. So, all those dimensions are covered. So, I'm, uh, I will be stopping it here and then I will be starting a new topic which is about the government. So, let us have a, some kind of background about the government and then we will be seeing that how governments react to such type of formulations. So, now we are going to talk about the Ricardian equivalence. Now, in the two period model, uh, we can also introduce the government that is the flexibility that it provides and since the mathematical treatment becomes more uh, simpler in two period scenarios compared to infinite period or up to period t. So, we will be understanding that how individuals react to government decisions, whether those government, deci those government decisions impact the consumption behavior of the representative agent. If those uh, 
those actions of the government are going to impact or if the government is going to give some kind of uh, kind of uh, tax relief or tax burden on the individual then how these individuals are going to play important role uh, how these individuals are going to work out with their consumption so whether the consumption is smoothing pattern will remain same or it will change now i think those dimensions are important to look at and since you already have the background now it will be easier to understand and the idea behind ricardian equivalence if you see in a nutshell it talks about how individuals react to the change in the in the government decisions about taxation the concept starts with the basic premise that if government is going to give you tax relief in the current period it doesn't mean that this uh, it then mean that you will not be paying in future the government uh, also goes uh, through the same framework that we have seen for the consumer that it also optimizes its expenditure so maybe in the current period the government is going to reduce the taxes but in future period the government will increase the tax now individuals are also rational so they also have the similar kind of experience learnings and then they also have certain expectation so if the government is going to give a tax relief in the current period then individuals are also also smart they know that we are going to get the the we are getting the tax relief in the current period but we are going to pay this in future so they also save this amount to smooth to smoothen out the burden of tax in future in future period and then the they easily smooth out or smoothen their consumption in two period scenarios so ricardo in uh, uh, in 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 the late uh, uh, around 17 or i would say 18th century he talked about uh, he talked about the such type of behavior of the uh, the consumer when the government is going to take decision about the taxation so here it is also this concept is also linked with the public finance theories public economics also but it is more of a macro because it deals with consumption and all other variables but uh, you can also link with link it with the public finance so the ricardian equivalence tells that the tax uh, cut is not a free lunch you will have to pay back in future so we'll be understanding those dimensions here and we will be also trying to see that how this work so the reference remains same for for this the the i would request all of you to go through this stephen d williamson book and this book gives you the idea you can also go to the sanjay kechug and this also gives a sufficient background so what is the what will be the learning objectives that how the government behaves in the economy what is the role how government construct the lifetime budget constraint right how we can understand the ricardian equivalence theorem how we can understand the burden of the debt and the financing strategies so these are this but i will continue this in the next session and then we will start from there thank you thank you so much